Welcome to my second presentation at the second Haku conference. This time I will be talking about AppRack, a module for creating the nice rack script for searching your file systems and other stuff that you want to do to your text-based files. I hope you're going to like it. So how did this all get started? About two months ago, my notebook started to be wobbly, a wobbly notebook. I guess it had been never off, off the power supply for months and years, basically since ever since COVID and we stopped traveling. And as you can see from the side view, it got like twice as thick as it used to be. Um, apparently that is an issue with um, MacBook Pros of that generation. If you leave them on the power supply too long, the batteries start to blow up. So I was doing a lot of Rakuto spec tests on that machine for a long time, for a better part of a few past two and a half years, minimum five spec tests a day. So that didn't help because it would get very hot always. Um, I looked at getting another MacBook Pro, but the only one that I would like to have was deliverable in two months. So that was not really an option. So what to do? Well, the day that I found, after I found out this, I went to, to visit our local Apple store. It's not actually an Apple store, but it's a store that actually only sells Macs. So I guess it is an Apple store. Um, so I actually went to the desk there and the remark was, we don't change batteries here. Uh, we can send it away from you, for you, and from me, of course. Uh, but that was not a real option. Um, so I wondered, uh, do you have a Mac Mini in stock? And I said, they said, yes, okay. So I got home with a Mac Mini, an M1 Mac Mini, no less. Although it was a 2020 one, so it was pretty old. But hey, it wasn't that expensive anyway. So it would actually allow me to do some uh, heavy stuff like dev work for Rakudo. Uh, and I had already had an external screen and a keyboard. So I would be ready to go. But yeah, after a while I found that that's going to be too much of a change in my workflow, especially the, the, the external keyboard I didn't like very much. So um, yeah, basically I referred it to actually keeping the wobbly MacBook Pro for terminal sessions only. I actually put it on a, on a, on a, um, a lower capacity um, uh, uh, loader. So it wouldn't actually try to charge it as fast as possible, but more drippingly. Um, and I kept using it for stuff like email and RIC, and of course making backups uh, every hour. And basically, normally I would leave it on, but I would switch it off during the night and put it actually in a safe place uh, away from anything flammable. So that was, yeah, that worked sort of. Uh, I mean, so I could start working remotely on the M1. So install Xcode to get the compiler and all that stuff. Install Rakudo, that also worked out. Install some of the other stuff that I normally use. And then I realized ACK. Hmm. I used to use ACK a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't really want to actually have any Perl dependencies on my system anymore. So um, I guess at that point in time, an itch that I had a long time uh, basically became real. I mean, it felt like an itch that I wanted to actually make a, a Rocco version of ACK uh, because it would be a very nice tool to have. It would also could be a very nice showcase for Rocco capabilities. So I was wondering, so why why don't we have an ACK with Rocco features? And I guess the, question, the answers to that are, well, it's too much work. Um, it will never be fast enough. Um, basically, egg is good enough, so why would you? Mm. But still, it felt that I was going to miss out on a great opportunity. So I started to think to myself, okay, what features do I actually need in, in, a, in a program such as Ag? I, I want to be, be able to save recursively by default. That's not really a big issue, but yeah, it's, Grab doesn't do that by default, so there you go. Uh, it should be limited to known file types. It should have easy, understandable options. So basically options that tell you what they do rather than being very cryptic. I want to have proper feedback on, on um, incorrect use of options. 
I want to actually be have it be able to call an editor with the locations that were found. I want to actually be able to do bulk modification of files. I want to have an alternative to find. I want to be able to support uh, searching JSON. And I want to be able to uh, search uh, on git blame information and basically see that. So that's the features that I need wanted to have. And some of them actually were not covered by ACK. So I guess it was time to actually start on uh, a Raku version. So I set out some goals. I should basically be built on possibly existing components. Um, I was going for more features than, than speed, as well, at least initially. This sounds familiar to people using Raku, uh, so that should be okay. Uh, I would like to have extensive documentation help and examples with it, because I would not want to be the only user for, of this program. Um, and I would like to have thorough testing, and it should be ready before actually this presentation has been made. So I looked at existing components and I already had some components that I developed in the past that I could use for this. Uh, one of them is the paths uh, module. Basically, it's a fast recursive path to file resolver. Um, it's very fast. It's basically all NQP, so pretty fast. Uh, there's highlighter. Highlighter is actually used by the uh, IRC uh, log website to highlight uh, places where uh, if you use the search option. I had Hasword, which is actually also made for the uh, IRC log website. Uh, basically, it, it, it's about 10 times as fast f finding a word in a string than using regular expressions. Um, as CLI arguments basically show a hash as uh, command line options that was already made. And of course, thanks to Timo Paulson, uh, we already had JSON fast, so I could be using that. But of course, a lot of new components would need to be made. And of course, all of these components you can use separately as well. So if you're not really that interested in using the app rack, you can actually use all of these components separately as well. So what are the new components? Um, that's lines containing, basically look for a string, regex, or a condition in, uh, in, some, in objects that produce lines. There's the edit files. Basically, you give it a, a list of files, line, and column specifications, and it will call an editor and guide you to those locations. Uh, at the moment, only for uh, Vim, but uh, if you have your other favorite editor, you can easily add it to it and basically create a p uh, pull request for the module. So go ahead. Uh, git blame file basically uh, allows you to uh, look at uh, git blame info from a file uh, in, in, a, in a procedural way. Then we have hyperize. Basically, a hyper is very nice for your for your uh, basically spreading out your programming load over multiple threads, uh, but its defaults are a bit wobbly, I think. So I actually created this module um, that uh, gives you sane defaults. Actually, these sane defaults will be in the next release of uh, Rakudo as well. So maybe it will go away again. Uh, meta constants, basically that's um, something that will look at your meta JSON file and uh, export uh, contents of it as constants into your uh, module. So you can actually use them for feedback and stuff. And CLI version, it basically adds dash dash version to your script with all of the uh, information that it can get from the meta6.json. And the same for the CLI help, which basically uh, adds a dash dash help to your script and which you can actually uh, quite extensively um, extend to cover a lot of stuff in that option. Um, so I was thinking about the name, and the name that I originally came up with was Rack. I mean, the Raku version of Ack, but yeah, I, 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 it's not three letters, and I guess Rack in certain circles has uh, connotations that not so nice. So um, I looked at it, and in fact, Rack is a simplified command line interface for Raku itself. Um, some options that of Raku are actually being handled by Rack as well. So I decided on Rack as the command line interface name. Uh, it's shorter, 
and uh, it's three letters and we used AppRack as the distribution name. So it's not Ack, it's Rack. There you go. Um, so have a look at the, the how you use Rack. The basic use is just very simple. The first argument is the pattern to look for. And the pattern can be a string, it can be a regex, it can be a whatever code, and it can be a callable. So how would that look? Well, it looks like this. You basically say rack. And in this case, I'm going to look, look for the string Zippo. Uh, if I do this in the Rakudo um, repo repository, you get this result. Uh, there's two occasions of Zippo in uh, the Rakudo uh, repository. Well, actually, this is in the test repository, which is Roast, but it's basically a subdirectory of um, Rakudo after you've done a spec test. So there you go, two places where it could be found. Um, so how do you actually specify a regular expression? Well, regular expression is specified by a slash at the beginning of the string and a slash at the end of the string. And that basically allows you to, well, it should look familiar. Uh, of course, with uh, the, um, the shells that you use, you probably need to quote that uh, for it to arrive in, in Rakudo safely. So that's why the quotes are around that. Uh, but basically anything uh, that you starts with a slash and ends with a slash will be considered a regular expression. And in this case, we're going to look for the word uh, for the string round robin uh, before a parenthesis open. And that gives you for uh, Rakudo, it gives you all of these. Uh, as you may notice, uh, round robin is highlighted, it's, it's been bolded, uh, but the prints open is not because it was actually not part of the match. So you can also do a, a whatever code, and a whatever code is recognized by starting with star dot. So this basically says uh, strip all of the spaces at the beginning of each line uh, and then select all of the um, lines that start with my role R1. Um, there you go, that's not that hard. And these are all the places in the Rakudo and in the spec test that actually have a my role R1 at some point in a line with only white space before it. Now with actually specifying callables. Callables can, you can specify by actually starting with a curly brace open and ending with a curly brace close. And the, the callables that you specify like that are, are special in the sense that uh, if it returns the true, then the line will be selected on which it is executed. And this is this case. Uh, we're looking for uh, any line that contains the, the string round robin and of which the file ends with dot t. Um, the, the dynamic variable dollar star io will, in the case of callables, will contain the, the, the uh, io object, the io object of the file on which this, this line actually is a part of. So how does that look as a result? You can see that it only found the t files in, in it and some of them in the spec in Roast and some of them in actually in Rakudo itself, the ones with T slash O2. And you can also see that there's no highlighting here because it's a callable and we cannot actually determine from the callable where it found it on the outside. So um, yeah, that's one disadvantage of using a callable. You don't get any highlighting, but it gets the job done. Then you can specify where to look. That's default to the current directory. Uh, if standard input is redirected, it actually uh, defaults to that standard input. Um, you can specify any file names that you want, possibly expanded by the shell. Uh, any directories, also possibly expanded by the shell. Uh, if you really want to specify just file names that you want to look for, you can actually put those into a file and reference that with dash dash files from. Or if you have a set of directories that you want to uh, search in, you can specify dash dash paths from. Uh, paths is basically uh, means in this case, it could be a directory, it could also be a file name. So how does that look? Well, 
Here we're going to look for a round robin again, but in this case, we're actually going to take all of the core C setting code, which is a lot of source code, uh, which uh, happens to live in the gen more core C dot setting uh, file. And we basically put that on standard input. And we find round robin there about five times in there, a sub and some comments and an iterator, etc. Um, you note that there's no uh, line numbers here because the default for actually searching on standard input does not uh, actually add any line numbers here, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, you can, of course, just specify the file. Even though dot setting is not a known uh, extension, in, because you specified the exact file name, it will actually look in, in that. And the result will be actually the same, except that now we also get line numbers because the default for searching in a file will give you line numbers. Um, so suppose I want to look for a round robin in, in the source directory and the tspec directory, which is roast. Then that will take you this result. Note again that round robin is there highlighted in this because we just basically specified it as a string, so we can actually find that in the string and highlight that for you. And here we use a regular expression and basically look for the word bar. And in this case, we're only going to look in the any of the directories under tspec s16, uh, anything after that. So you can actually specify wildcards for directories as well as files. And that basically looks like this. There's a lot of bar in there. Note that I actually used uh, uh, very specific directories to actually get results that weren't too big for actually this presentation. Uh, we can also, like I said, uh, specify a file. So I have created this file called settings.list and it contains the core setting source files that we have. And you can actually look in that by specifying, specifying files from settings list. And then we basically see that uh, subnext is actually in the C setting and in the E setting and not in the D setting. You can actually also do the uh, put directions in there. So I have a file called sources.list in which I have the source and the source of NQP. And we can specify that with pass from and then look for this specific specific string, um, which gives you this result. Um, you can you can see here that that um, there's places in NQP that actually have it, but also the source of uh, Rakudo itself. So this is something that uh, occurs in the source of Rakudo itself, as well in the optimizer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. <clears throat> That's all good and fine. And I started looking at, I want to be able to edit what I've found. And I started Googling for film edit files and you get all sorts of results, but not what you want. Um, I should have looked at man VI. Um, that would have almost immediately give me the results. Namely, uh, there's just something called an error file and you actually call that with minus Q. Um, well, I abstracted, abstracted this into the edit files module for Vim only at the moment. And that, as I said, uh, pull requests are welcome for this. Um, if you have an, uh, another editor that you would like to support with this. Um, Damien Conway actually uh, put me on the right track here. And since Damien is a person who actually uses all sorts of stuff from within Vim, rather than uh, what I wanted, basically use, uh, it, use Vim within uh, Rack. He wanted to use Rack from within Vim. And basically he needed another interface, it was just called VimGrab. And I actually implemented that as well because it was easy to do. So now you can actually use Rack inside Vim as well. So how does that look? Well, basically in this case, I'm going to look for submax in the source of Rakudo and I'm specifying dash dash edit and voila, I wind up at the first case of uh, submax in the core, in the source code. 
Um, you need to know that you can move to the next entry by uh, colon cn. That's something you need to uh, learn about when you're using this feature. I guess I should I should better document that. Uh, but yeah, okay, there you go. Uh, the other one of the other things that I wanted to do was bulk modification. And bulk modification is possible with the modify files option. Uh, you can actually optionally also say, I want to create backups with this particular extension. And you can also run it with dry run to not actually do the, do the modification, but just find out how many times uh, it would get done. So how must it look? So basically I'm using a whatever code here. Basically I'm going to substitute um, the no longer used uh, uh, formatting type in uh, in Vim called Perl 6. Basically remove it. All source files in Rakudo basically had those removed and apparently th these there were a number of files that were missed. Uh, so I'm doing a try run and it basically tells me, okay, three files changed, three lines changed, but no changes made because of dry run. So let's do this for real then. Process three 46 files and I looked at the diff and there's indeed uh, three files that actually still had that in there and they're actually quite old or quite new so or not seen as much because they're actually uh, only for the Java uh, for the JVM uh, backend and these of course got pushed uh, recently as well so they're now out of it I also want to have the alternative to find. I, 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 I never got to really to appreciate find, but I want to have the same pattern matching capabilities as we have on lines. So string, regex, whatever code or call callable. You activate it with find and basically you tell what to look for and dash dash find and it will find it for you. In this case, I'm looking for hash underscore table and it basically gives all the files where hash underscore table in occurs in. Most of these are apparently in more, but yeah, this is just to give you an idea. So I would also have support for searching JSON. Um, I've done a lot on the uh, Raku ecosystem archive. Hmm. I should have said ecosystem, not system there. All right, sorry. Uh, Raku ecosystem archive in which there is one JSON file for every release distribution version, and that's more than 8,000 of them right now. Um, but many older of them are actually missing fields, so it's it's not quite... Um, um, it's a bit dirty, every, everyone, every, near, every now and then. Um, you can do two types of searching for JSON. You can actually do it per file, or you can actually do uh, JSON per line. There's apparently there's a, a, a standard uh, JSON lines that basically has files uh, with each line is a, is a JSON. So we actually support that as well. So how does that look? So suppose I uh, want to look for the uh, authority of uh, Simon Proctor, Simon Zeff. Um, so I look with this whatever code, I look, the, 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 the JSON profile is basically given as a, as a hash to uh, the, the code that you specify and basically look at the auth field and see if that's equal to Simon and then it will select that file. Um, to give you a bit of a nice result, I'm only looking for the uh, modules that actually start with B. Um, so I'm looking for JSON profile here. And how does that look? Well, that's a lot of garbage in there. Hmm. So why do we have this garbage in there? That's because a lot of the JSON files do not actually have an auth field when, when they should really. But yeah, this is historically uh, probably old stuff. So we can actually look at that later at some point. But for now, I just want to get rid of that. So how can I get rid of that? Well. Raku has this feature called quietly, and this is also has a parameter that you can specify quietly. So when a callable or whatever code produces any warnings, it will actually be ignored. So how does this look then? 
Uh, that's quite a lot better. So there's basically two versions of the B3 module, version 1 and version 2, that are in the Raku ecosystem archive. So what else can you do with this? Well, the, as I said a little before, the callable has special features. So if you use a pattern, a callable pattern, and which you can specify by with the um, curly brace open, curly brace close, um, you can actually either refer, uh, return a true value, which means that uh, the line will be uh, selected, you can actually uh, return a false value, which means uh, the value will not be selected. You can actually also return empty, which means that it won't get uh, selected. And you can return something else, and then that will be selected. So in this case, I'm going to actually look through all of the um, meta files that we have in the Raku ecosystem archive and see if we have any with the, of which the name is APRAC and we are going to uh, show the description of it. Uh, JSON profile, uh, I'm not interested in the, in the file name, so I'm telling it to not show the file name, and to uh, I'm going to be lazy. I only want the unique versions of that. That's another feature that you can have. Uh, basically, it will only show the unique uh, finds that it finds. And how does that look? So you can see that the description of ABRAC over the uh, weeks has changed from a CLI for search of strings and files to in more and more and to 21st century grab find ag, ag, RG on steroids. Actually, this was uh, stolen from Damien because he actually coined this. Thank you, Damien. So the other thing that I wanted to be able to do is uh, get, get blame information on my searches. Uh, show blame will show blame info on the on the uh, find in a file if it is available, and blame per line will actually allow you to select uh, your your lines uh, <coughs> using the uh, git blame line object. Now both can be very uh, expensive, so this is basic. This is really an attack on the performance of the search operation, but that's basically because Git needs to fetch all of the information. And if it's, if it's something like in Rakudo with lots and lots, thousands of, um, I think it's now 32,000 uh, commits on the repo, it can get pretty expensive to actually put the, the Git blame information of a file together. So how does that look? Well, in this case, I'm going to look for submake uh, in the source of Rakudo, and I'm going to want to show the, the blame information with it. And how does that look? It looks like this. And you can see that there's lots and lots of submakes in, in the code, and some of them are changes from 2012, 2011 even, um, others from later, and. Uh, 2013, 2017, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is nice. You can get, get a good overview of what has happened there, and of course it gives you the um, uh, the git um, the SHA of the commits. So you can actually, if you want to, uh, look further on the, with the SHAs. Um, <clears throat> in this case, I'm going to uh, select on the blame information. And I'm going to basically do the same thing as I just did now. I'm going to show the SHA and the summary. If the summary of uh, the git blame information contains the word build all. Um, and I just see that I actually made a mistake here that I forgot to curly close. But anyway, the code example will show you that this works. And of course, I'm only interested in the unique versions of this. So here we go. How does that look? Now, in this case, I've so you can see all, all of these places where we had build plan in the uh, summary. And it took a little while to actually do this for all of the files in the, in the, in the Rakudo source. Um, so this took about 18 seconds. As you can see, the um, amount of CPU used is a, a multiple of that. 
So this was nicely actually spread out over multiple CPUs to make it happen faster for you. I guess that's one of the features of, of uh, Rack that it will actually spread out over multiple CPUs um, transparently for you, um, if you if you want that. You can actually specify how many CPUs you want to use with parameters that you can specify on the command line as well. But yeah, that's re really hardly ever necessary. Um, of course, I used the unique uh, feature here, and I'm, as I said, I was not interested in the uh, file name, so there you go. Now you've seen all of these nice little long option names. I mean, a lot of similar programs actually have uh, shortcuts. Um, Ruck does not have shortcuts. It only has long named options. Um, but you can create your own shortcuts with the dash dash save option. Dash dash save basically will take all of your arguments that you have specified, all of the I would say options that you have specified and save them for you. So in this case, I'm going to do dash dash ignore case and save that as I. And I'm going to do dash dash ignore mark and save that as M. I'm going to say, uh, save dash I dash M as I am. And then if I want to do a search that is both ignore case and ignore mark, only thing I need to specify is dash I am. So you've created your own uh, shortcuts here, which means that um, you can actually yeah, customize it to your liking, to your feature that you want. Um, I found that all of the other programs that we have uh, that exist uh, um, for, for this type of jobs, they have similar options, but they're always slightly different. Um, and it's, it gets really, really confusing. So I think maybe another standard would just be another standard. Uh, allowing you to actually create your own shortcuts basically makes one standard that works for you. So how would it look? Uh, this is basically a regular expression where we're looking for foo and bar in capitals. Uh, with a, uh, six A's in between and without, without regard to uh, case and any uh, accents on the letters. So does it actually exist in the source of uh, Rakudo? Uh, yes, it does. There's text for, actually the tests for ignore case and ignore mark. So there you go. We found a word there with full bar with five A's in between. So Rack, how many options does it have? Well, at current count, it's 54. Um, I not, did not mention any of the highlighting context display options in, in here. Um, yeah, you can do a lot there. Uh, you have output options. Basically, you can put the output into a file without actually have to do redirects in the, in the, uh, in the shell. Uh, or you can actually uh, run it through a pager if you want. Um, you can check out the dash dash help option and uh, then it will give you all of the in, uh, help that you need. Well, hopefully anyway. So how does that look? It looks like this. It's, yeah, you could argue this is a bit of a cheat, 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 cheat. Um, but you can, uh, uh, each word that you see on the beginning of the line that is highlighted, so uh, pattern or string or input of code, you can call with dash dash help and get more information about those options. So there's a lot of options. It goes down like this. And then at the end, we have something like this. Um, so you can get, as it said there, help foo. You can actually get additional uh, help about pattern, string, code, etc., etc. So, wow. Um, that's a lot of stuff of Rack, and it's still, I guess, it's just touching the surface because yeah, I only started to use it myself. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting to use it myself a lot, and uh, I'm, I'm still thinking of, of new ways of using it and then implementing them usually. And other people are thinking of ways of using it, and, and I can usually implement them quite quickly. Um, so that's nice. 
So people would wonder, but, but what ever happened to the MacBook Pro? Well, I uh, ordered replacement batteries for it. Uh, I fixed it. I uh, actually um, ordered a toolkit to do the battery replacement, uh, which contains screwdrivers and glue solvent and safety glasses, etc. The problem with batteries in the MacBook Pro is that you cannot actually officially uh, change them. They are glued to the uh, MacBook Pro and officially you cannot actually do that yourself. But thanks to our fix it you can. It took about one week to actually get all the goods that I needed and then I, I actually needed to collect the courage to actually do this because it's been a while since I actually uh, worked inside um, hardware like that uh, before and it's actually the first time in the macbook pro that i was going to do this so uh, it took a little while for me to actually collect the courage to do the surgery so well, how does that look like well it looks a little bit like this this is the package that i got from my fix it well apart from the scissors that i already had and the uh, ice cube uh, containers that also I had. That's an idea that I had because it was always all the little tiny screws that had to be. Uh, there were 65 steps for doing this uh, to your MacBook Pro, and each step has had certain screws that had that had to be unscrewed, and had to be put back in exactly the same location. And that was yeah, it's going to be messy. So I decided to actually get uh, these ice cubes, and basically each step got an, uh, an its own little box uh, there with uh, with the screws in it so after opening it up it looked like this you can see that the batteries are pretty well i would say swollen um, with some solvent and some credit card like things you start actually trying to disconnect them from the glue from the print from the the the, the case uh, there uh, hoping that they will actually not uh, break and sort of turn into flames because yeah uh, batteries that look like this generally aren't in the best of conditions uh, so you always run the risk that they suddenly start to go uh, hot and turn into a fiery place so after a little while i actually got them out with all the glue still sort of half attached to them and half attached to the uh, the case um, i needed to clean up the, the case so that was the next step and then it was just a matter of putting the new batteries in with the self-adhesive stuff that they had with it and then basically put everything back which was like 50 steps back with put all the motherboard back in and connect everything up correctly in the right order um, but it worked out so there it is I fixed it you get the stickers with it so that's really nice so you can actually put it on your notebook that you fixed it uh, so cool those to uh, I fix it for the batteries and the tools and the clear how-to um, so <clears throat> Wendy actually made a uh, little uh, thing on Flickr about this so if you want to see more pictures about this you can so where the goals reached uh no <laughs> as with many projects this was just a start um i think we got a good first prototype of the functionality that i wanted to have uh, the documentation is still pretty succinct and um well I, I i really desperately need more examples i guess i'll steal some of them from the uh, uh from this presentation but yeah you get the idea um there's no testing at the moment at all um, so uh, yeah, tests need to be added, and uh, yeah, help will be, if you like Rack, uh, help for this would be very much appreciated. So uh, if only you could find issues that that uh, with Rack, then uh, make an issue for it. Um, if, if you find bugs, and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, pull requests would even be better. But I'll take the issues as well. So what are my future plans with uh, Rack? Uh, well, the find functionality still needs a lot of fleshing out. Um, you can only select at the moment on, on file names, but you cannot select on the dates of the, the files. So that's something that needs to be fleshed out. Um, uh, Smoke Machine, Fernando Oliveira, de, Fernando Corbe, 
smoke machine. Uh, basically had the idea, is why, why don't we have this feature also as a subroutine that you can actually call in your own program? And I sort of made that happen, but it's still not right to be used. So I need to, that needs to be uh, uh, looked at and probably needs complete redesign of the internals, but that shouldn't be too much problem. Um, I'm thinking of supporting other text-based uh, serialized data, XML, uh, CSV, uh, basically anything that can produce uh, lines of text should be possible to support in Rack. Um, I want to have a generic profile support, so instead of looking for each line, you would be presented with the whole file for checking. That could be uh, useful. And I want to actually support uh, more extensive code. Uh, as you've seen, the code because starts to tend to, to be get very long, so I want to actually find some way of storing that as recipes that you can actually easily call. Um, there is some support for first, next, and last phasers in callables at the moment, but it's not complete yet. There's pretty sure there's other stuff that I forgot, and as I said, your suggestions and uh, pull requests are very welcome. So there you go. So if you like Rack, uh, want to try Rack, um, go for it and let me know. So we're getting to the end. So um, this is a little overview of all the modules that got used for Rack. And I guess if you have any questions, you can ask them uh, online on, a, on the Raku channel. Uh, you can ask them uh, maybe here later in, in, the, in a um, uh, hallway track. Um, I'll be available if that if that works out here. Um, so let me know. In the meantime, I would say thank you for watching, and I hope you're going to use Rack at least have a look at it. And if you like it, that will be even better. So that's it. Thank you very much. I'm available for questions, but hey, uh, hey, or oh. oh, Richard. Okay, Richard, go ahead. Oh, um, so um, is it possible to um, create a shortcut with a um, an option and a parameter? Yes. Um, okay. And a default as well. And a default. <laughs> okay, fabulous. Okay. Um, I, I've just da I've just downloaded it. I'm going to be playing around with it for the next right. month or so. Okay. For for the really simple case, like just searching for a straight string of text in a bunch of files, like the simplest act type case, how does it compare speed wise to something like rip grep? Uh, rip grep, I understand from Damien's timings that he's done, uh, is um, rack is about fifty times slower than rip grep, which is in the same order of magnitude as act being slower as rip grep. Uh, I understand that uh, Rack at the moment is about three times as slow as ACK, but that really depends, of course, uh, on, on the startup because uh, Rack has the standard startup of, of uh, Rakudo, which is like at least 0.1 second. And so, yeah, um, your mileage may vary. But I'm, I, for, what, for what it's worth, I mean, uh, the example that I did on uh, finding uh, all commits that have built all in it uh, on on Rakudo, uh, seeing that it is actually doing it, uh, spreading it out over multiple cores very nicely, uh, yeah, makes me feel good about it because I don't think the other, maybe Ripcrab does, but I, I'm pretty sure ACK does not actually spread out over multiple CPUs. Cool, Anton. Uh, thank you. Very very interesting talk. Uh, Basically, I would like to combine uh, this talk uh, with two other talks like Leon and my talk about uh, having a recommender for the packages in the Raku ecosystem and Leon saying what uh, invoking the Sturgeon law, right? So how easy would it be uh, to use, I mean, I didn't know, first of all, but I can use uh, AppRack for, for retrieving data and cleaning or querying the files, the packages, the meta JSON, you know, um, meta six uh, JSON files of the packages. So 
is it in the scope uh, of APRAC to be used for this kind of queries? Like, as I said, to make a search engine, to make a recommendation engine, to, to filter out uh, different files with different qualities? It's, it's very much in the scope. I mean, one of the examples I did is basically just that. Mm -hmm. and, and all of the JSON files are available if you just down, if you uh, just get clone the re, uh, record system archive, you have all of those available to you. Okay, so uh, basically, if I want to know the number of lines or the dates in which the files have been modified, do you, do you think I should be using Unix and Linux system for this to produce the, the search paths, or I should be using Caprac? Uh, Honestly, I'm lazy. I, don't, I would like yeah, to use yeah, Aprac, yeah. but you know, it 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 seems that maybe it's easier to just use Unix, Linux, whatever, right? To to form the query. Maybe I'm not sure what Linux tools you would use, and so I might give you a, a, an answer on that. That would be sort of advances to to Rack. Um, but yeah, I, I would try to use Rack for that because that's more more convenient to me now. So I mean, it, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. I, yeah. I might. Uh, my other thing is what pretty much uh, basically for all of the examples you have. If we have like say one line of command, right? So find all files that you know have this you know this pattern or file all files which finish with this extension and have pattern blah apply and apply the callable blah right mm -hmm. if we have this yeah. kind of sentences in front of the examples for me for for me it would be very easy to produce for example some grammars if i want you know from natural language perspective but it's not just that this is just for documentation purposes immediately people can mm -hmm. can be able to see uh, what is the verbalization right of the options 54 options that's arguments that's a little bit you know it's quite a lot, right? So. Well, it's actually it's going to up to a hundred at the moment, ah, uh, because I, I since I recorded the presentation, I actually um, uh, redid some of the. Basically, I went back for, to, from scratch to scratch, uh, and basically realized that I need actually two parts of this. I need to have on the one hand uh, basic search functionality, and then I need to have an interface for that for the command line. So I actually uh, uploaded earlier today uh, the RAC module in lowercase RAK, which is like the plumbing for app rack. And so depending on what you need, if you can actually use the, the, the plumbing in your own program and basically get all of the stuff that you want without actually producing any output, but basically get data structures back. And maybe you can use that for whatever purposes that you want. But anyway, and then my next step is going to be to actually integrate that plumbing into AppRack back again. And that's some, yeah, I guess about around Wednesday, Thursday, that should be uh, sort of done. And then we can go on to that. Now, one of the things that I did with the um, uh, redesign of the internals is basically I realized that um, a lot of things are. Uh, basically, um, you just have, want to do, do something per file or per line. And in, in any case, the difference between uh, YAML and JSON and, and um, XML is basically you, you want to do something in a file, you want to have to create a data structure, and you want to actually feed it to a callable. So uh, the, the, the JSON uh, example that I have is, is, is basically just a, uh, a one case of a, a generic thing where you basically have a, a transformer that transforms some kind of text format into an object that you can actually co uh, call your callable uh, on. So uh, yeah, it should, I'm going for a, a plugin structure so that people can do their own stuff if they want to uh whether that will be part of the recipe idea that i have or or, or something else i don't know yet but uh, yeah you get the picture so yeah that should that should work so, uh, yeah so okay like uh, my last comment on this like with this actually uh it's like we can very steve and i can very easily do this uh, eat your own dog food type of perspective like applying data wrangling to you know to to 
ecosystem packages mm -hmm. because as you said the data historically of the meta json files and the packages were with some you know historical span so it's kind of dirty and skewed right mm -hmm. this was actually one of the big things when i uploaded this for 5000 uh, approximately 5000 packages the meta J json files it was very it was all over right it was fairly you know fairly skewed data so some uh, significant clinic procedures had to be done so just from that perspective this would, would have been very useful for us right so yeah. well the, the ria already does some cleaning up uh for instance in the raco ecosystem archive you if you would have um a module on the github system that actually claims to be from cpan it would actually not allow that and vice versa uh, so it would actually already clean that up. So it's it's a lot of clean, a lot of cleaner information in there already. The original JSON files are also available, but then you have to open up the tar file. Okay, uh, I guess that's about time that I had for questions. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for watching.